that a carnivorous diet isn't a longevity producing diet. In the what if I told you that some of the foods you eat every day might be secretly cutting years off your life? Contrary to popular belief, not all so-called healthy foods are good for you. I, I love dairy. I, I was eating a lot of cheese and red wine, my diet, and I've looked at my blood biochemistry and I'm actually now younger and healthier than I've ever been. In fact, studies show that cutting out certain foods can significantly increase your lifespan. And in the short run, you'll actually feel better. Um, and in, the term, in terms of um, body composition, you'll actually look better too. In this video, I'll be revealing three foods you should avoid to live a longer, healthier life, based on expert advice from David Sinclair, a leading researcher in the field of aging and longevity. Not just that, I will also share practical tips on how to quit these foods and suggest alternatives that you can easily incorporate into your diet. So make sure you watch till the end. First, let's introduce you to David Sinclair and explain why his advice is so valuable. So who is David Sinclair? He is a renowned biologist and professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School. He's also one of the world's leading researchers in the field of aging and longevity. His groundbreaking work has helped advance our understanding of why we age and how we can slow it down. He has authored the bestseller book, Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To. Uh, and a lot of people argue with me saying, I feel great, how could this be wrong? But you know, remember, life is long. Sinclair believes in a proactive approach to aging, that humans can make lifestyle changes and dietary adjustments to enhance their lifespan. David Sinclair's advice is backed by extensive research and scientific evidence. Today, we'll be looking at three specific foods that Sinclair himself avoids to increase his chances of living a longer, healthier life. Any guesses on what the first food is? First on the list is sugar. It's no secret that sugar is a major culprit in many chronic diseases. Consuming too much sugar can lead to obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and even cancer. According to David Sinclair, cutting sugar from your diet is important to lower blood sugar. Sinclair explains that high blood sugar levels can lead to sugars attaching to proteins, a phenomenon he likes to call caramelization. This contributes to aging. He also goes on to explain that your body can make its own sugar. Within just two weeks of not consuming sugar, your liver makes sugar through gluconeogenesis, which according to Sinclair, is much better for your health than dietary sugar consumption. So, what can you do to reduce blood sugar spikes and make it easier to quit sugar? One effective strategy is to consider the order in which you eat your meals. Research suggests that starting your meal with fiber-rich vegetables, followed by proteins and fats, and then finishing with carbohydrates and sugar, can significantly reduce blood sugar spikes. This method slows down the digestion and absorption of sugars, leading to more stable blood sugar levels. And if you're ready to quit sugar, here are some practical tips to help you quit and make the transition easier. Firstly, instead of cutting out sugar all at once, gradually reduce your intake. This will help your taste buds adjust and reduce cravings. Secondly, drink plenty of water throughout the day. Sometimes, what you perceive as a sugar craving can actually be a sign of dehydration. Lastly, you can quit something without being overly harsh on yourself. It's okay to have a little bit of your favorite dessert once in a while. Allowing yourself this small treat can make it easier to stick to your sugar reduction plan in the long run. Do you find it difficult to cut down on sugar? What steps have you tried to reduce your sugar intake? Now, let's move on to the next food on our list. Are you ready for this one? It's something many of us consume daily. Bread. David Sinclair advises against consuming bread, particularly refined white bread. Bread is a staple in many diets, but its high glycemic index means it can cause rapid spikes in blood sugar levels, similar to sugar. These spikes can lead to increased insulin production and fat storage, which are not conducive to longevity. How often do you eat refined bread? Have you tried switching to whole grain options? Refined bread lacks the fiber, vitamins and minerals found in whole grains, leading to faster digestion and absorption of sugars. According to a study published in the British Medical Journal, consuming whole grains instead of refined grains is associated with lower risks of cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. So what can you do to minimize the negative impacts of bread on your health? Here are some practical tips. First, 
opt for whole grain or sprouted grain bread instead of refined white bread. Whole grains have a lower glycemic index and are packed with fiber, which slows down digestion and helps maintain stable blood sugar levels. Second, watch your portions. Instead of having bread as the main part of your meal, use it as a side dish. Pair it with protein and healthy fats to balance your meal and reduce blood sugar spikes. Third, you can try using alternatives to bread, like lettuce wraps, cauliflower bread, or vegetable-based wraps. These options are also lower in carbs and more nutrient-dense. By making these small yet mindful changes, you can reduce your intake of refined bread and its negative impact on your health. Now that we've covered sugar and bread, it's time to tackle the third and final food on our list, meat. How much meat do you think is too much for a healthy diet? David Sinclair emphasizes that reducing or eliminating meat from your diet can have significant benefits for your health and lifespan. David Sinclair advises minimizing meat consumption, particularly red and processed meats. Studies have shown that diets high in red and processed meats are linked to an increased risk of chronic diseases such as heart disease, cancer, and type 2 diabetes. I, I worked towards a, a Mediterranean diet, had fish, and eventually now I'm, I'm no meat. And, and that improved my numbers even better. Cholesterol, um, what do you call it, triglycerides all came down. Sinclair also adds that proteins that are in plants have a ratio of amino acids that stimulate longevity genes. And if you eat meat every meal, the body does not fight aging the way it could if you ate plants. However, he does say that he is not completely against meat and that you can eat fish occasionally, as it is a great source of omega-3 fatty acids. So what can you do to reduce your meat consumption and what healthier alternatives can you opt for? Firstly, you don't have to give up meat entirely. Start by reducing your meat intake and incorporating more plant-based meals into your diet. Gradually, you can shift to a more plant-focused diet without feeling deprived. Secondly, incorporate more plant-based proteins into your diet. Beans, lentils, tofu, tempeh, and quinoa are excellent sources of protein that can replace meat in your meals. They are rich in fiber, vitamins, as well as minerals. Thirdly, experiment with meat alternatives. There are so many meat substitutes available today, from veggie burgers to plant-based sausages and meatless meatballs. These products are designed to mimic the taste and texture of meat while offering a healthier alternative. Have you tried any of these meat substitutes? What do you think about them? To recap, we've explored why avoiding sugar, refined bread and meat can promote longevity, based on the expert advice of David Sinclair. By understanding the impact of these foods on your health and making mindful choices, you can take proactive steps toward living a longer, healthier life. Which of these foods, sugar, bread, or meat, would be the hardest for you to give up? What changes are you willing to make to your diet for better health and longevity? Comment below and tell us. A gentle reminder, this video is for informational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. That's it for this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more health and wellness tips. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.